face verticals, yeah, of course they work. Hey, welcome back. So in the last video, we did this uh, business where we looked at parasitic vertical, okay, where we took two, two verticals, one slightly taller than the other, and a particular spacing, and uh, we had a bit of gain, and the gain was max gain at five degrees off the horizon was minus 1.5. So what we're going to do is we'll take a note of these, all right, so we can replay this again but using phase vertical, so minus 1.5. And our front to back, let's do the same, at five degrees off the horizon is minus 11. Right, so what is a phase vertical? I found this great site actually. You could so just search for two phased verticals array, 40 meters on ON8IM, and you'll discover this as well but I don't know anything about this man but there was a man called Christman okay and he used a particular method of driving two antennas because in this one here we put the coax only to one side not the other the Christman method came up with a interesting uh, fix is he took one antenna there and an identical antenna there which means connecting them both with radials, lying one on the ground, testing it out and getting them both at the right frequency. Let's say 7.2 megahertz. They've got to be identical. All right, get them both cock on. And then what we do is we take a piece of coax of a very particular lens, which I'll come to in a minute, to a box of tricks. So now, in a video I did uh, not so long ago, we talked about velocity factor and angles, all right? So if this confuses you, go back to those two videos and I'll put the link to that in the description here. So this is the phase verticals. You can see my picture here, is similar to what you've got on the screen, is that these are the verticals here as a quarter of a wavelength distance between them and they're a quarter of a late wavelength high and they're tuned so it might not be quite a quarter whatever that is to make it exactly on your frequency now what Chrisman came up with and this actually I'm after some input from you as well in the comments if you don't mind is that um, he was using I believe 50 ohm coax and I thought you had to use 75 ohm coax but anyway he's got two feeds to split the uh, signal to the two antennas at 84 degrees each of RG213 I think I've read one guy who did RG213 but I'm not going to faff about on that I just want to know which bit should be 50 ohm which bit should be 75 I've, I've read a lot of people have chopped out the 75 ohm and going with 50 ohm but anyway so 84 degrees less velocity factor uh, to make sure you've actually got 84 degrees of your sine wave going this way and 84 degrees going uh, this way and then he has a loop of wire of 71 degrees that does nothing other than delay the signal to one of them okay so let's say we've got 84 degrees going this way we will then have 84 degrees going this way plus this bit 71 degrees so the signal would come up and go along there and then depending on the switch it might go i will also go along here and up to there so this becomes longer this bit here is longer. So it delays the signal, just a whisker, so that instead of acting as a mirror, it, acting, it acts in phase, if you like, by 71 degrees, and we end up with more signal going that way. Now, if I've still got my, dog's barking, somebody must be at the door, if I've still got my MMANA running from the last video, and I think I have, it's down here somewhere, and have a look at this because uh, we need to do roughly the same. So if you just stand by, I'm going to just adjust this so they both look the same. Hold on. Two, 
So we've drawn two verticals. One has got a coax feed and the other hasn't. So we need to adjust that by doing wire two base as well. And this is where we can change the phasing, the degrees. And we're going to put in 71 because that's what Mr. Chrisman said. So let's have a look, fire up and see what happens. Um, SWR has gone through the roof. So let's just find out where it's resonant. The resonant it says 6.9. So let's just pretend we're on 6.9 megahertz because, oops, it'll be identical anyway. And apparently you get a better match than this. Ah, oh, I have read the impedance can be low. There is a, a little coil you can put in to make the SWR even better if you wanted to. But anyway, let's have a look, all right? So the last one had minus 1.5 one way and minus 11 the other. Now I have seen plots of a two element array with an extreme dent, an extreme dent, almost nothing going behind you. I've never been able to model that. Maybe it's something wrong with my maths. I don't know. It's just come down to minus five. So it says here, we were at minus 1.5. We're now at minus 0.8. So we are nearly a dB better, not quite, but nearly a dB better in front of back gain. And we were at minus 11 and we're now going to be at minus eight. Let's say there's a dB in it. I mean, let's say it's two dB in it. Two dB is a fair amount, though, if we're doing all this work. You'd, you'd want to get every bit out of it. But the plots that I've seen on the internet look a bit better than this, so I don't know if it's my modelling. I've got no idea. But I like that. Now, what happens, right, before we go, what happens if you put a third one in and make this a triangle? Well, it's that interesting. We'll cover that next time. There's another video for you here the playlist underneath for a bit of fun have a great day thanks for joining me i'll see you next time bye for now